Hey, everybody, it is time once again for my college football picks. And back with me again this week is DK. How you doing, DK? I'm doing good, man. How are uh, how are you doing? You were saying it was uh, snowing there where you were at. Yeah, it was. Uh, first signif well, significant snow of the season. Had <laughs> about three inches of snow, but, you know, that's still a good amount. You are talking to a Canadian right now, so significant. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know our first big snowfall was about 24 inches. I mean, so, so three doesn't seem significant to me. Well, personally. you're you're talking to someone who, <laughs> when they lived near DC, <clears throat> when even the tiniest snowflake fell, people would be like, "Oh my God, it's snowing!" <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, I was actually um, I was in Louisiana one time, and it was I believe it was like December 14th or something, mm. probably about 10 years ago. Oh, yeah, one of my first times there, and it snowed when I was there, and it was like they didn't have plows, they didn't have shovels, <laughs> like they didn't know what to do. It was kind of funny. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm Canadian. This is all good. Uh, before we get to this week's games, I'm gonna tell you guys how I did last week. Had a really good week last week, uh, despite some results. I went 15 and 6 on my picks, including my somewhat upset pick, but technically it was an upset pick of TCU beating Texas. I'll never get why Texas was favored by as much as they yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was um I think a lot of people were probably on that. What was that a three point dog? Uh three or I think three or four, I believe. Yeah, I think maybe just giving Texas a little bit too much credit for being at home. Possibly, man, and nothing against Texas, they're a good team, but yeah, I wasn't really gonna bite into that. Okay, so these uh, these are rankings from the college football playoffs that we're gonna be using here this week. These are straight up picks, but we will mention the point spread for all of you that want to mention the point spread or need the point spread. So, we're gonna start off with a Thursday night game in the American Athletic Conference. As SMU travels to 21st ranked Tulane, SMU six and four, Tulane eight and two, the Green Wave are favored by three and a half points. <laughs> and I, I've been on the show before, and I always say like you get three points for being at home. So this is almost a pick 'em in my eyes. I like to I like the way Tulane's been playing, mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll take Tulane here. Yeah, I'm going to go with Tulane as well. They've been a very nice surprise this year. Um, I honestly didn't expect them to be in a position to where they're going to be playing more than likely for the American Conference in a couple of weeks. But, yeah, I, I like Tulane here to win this game. All right, to the games on Saturday. Navy is at 20th-ranked UCF. Navy 3-7, and seven, UCF 8-2. and two. UCF favored by 16 and a half points. And they uh, they should be favored by 16 and a half in this yes, one. I'm not going to take a whole lot of time breaking down this one. UCF wins. Yeah, it's going to be UCF. I mean, gee. I don't know if they'll make the, like, I don't know if they'll beat that spread. Mm -hmm. 16 and a half seems like right on par where it could be. It could be 16, could be 17, maybe a missed extra point. We'll see what happens. Um, I probably wouldn't bet this if we were uh, throwing some money down. Right. It's kind of hard, hard to pick. And I just want to mention, before we keep going, if you think that's the biggest spread of the week, we're just getting started. Oh, that's nowhere yeah. near the biggest spread we, of the week. We've got some big ones coming up. Like, like you said before we started recording, you did not make your picks before starting to record here. Yeah. I haven't even really looked at the spreads, so it's going to be interesting to see. What's this, happening here? Yeah, I'm I'm actually doing something different this week <clears throat> where I'm making my picks as we're recording. So this is live. Live. Well, by you guys can't see it live, right. but it's live for me. Right. Maybe we'll do a live show one day. That'd be yeah, kind of cool. That'd be pretty fun. This next game, depending on how things go, could be a preview of the Big Ten title game. As Illinois travels to third-ranked Michigan, Illinois seven and three, Michigan ten and zero, the Wolverines are favored by eighteen points. Okay, so so basically, the way this works is Mich Michigan and Ohio State are in on the same division, right? So right. they can't play each other in the Big Ten title game, right? 
that is just it, it's too bad that's the way it works where where you can't see that matchup like like you get to see it every year but you don't get to see it in the big title matchup so but yeah michigan they're they're rolling 10 and 0 i yeah i don't know about the spread but yeah if if this was just a pick them definitely michigan here I'm gonna go with Michigan. I I think this this one could be a trap game, but I think Michigan is gonna win. Illinois the last couple of weeks they haven't really been themselves. Um, pardon me, but no, I like Michigan on this one. And honestly, and this is my opinion, I think they're the better team than Ohio State. And we'll get to Ohio State in a little bit. But if I'm to compare the two. I think Michigan is the better of the two because they have not – they may have had like one game where they may have struggled. Mm-hmm. But Ohio State multiple times have been close to defeat. So Yeah, I, I agree with um, Michigan being the more complete team. But um, I, I do think that maybe Ohio State is in Michigan's head where it's where it's almost like – I don't know how to explain it, but it's yeah. little brother and big brother almost mm-hmm. situation. We'll see. We'll see how, what happens. And one thing with Michigan, they kind of start kind of slow, mm-hmm. but they always end up s- seeming to cover these these giant point spreads that they yeah. have each week. Yeah. So, and what did you say? This one was 18 and a half? 18. 18? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll say Michigan covers that. Probably wins by three TDs. All right. Probably in the end. For all you gamblers. Right. Uh fourth ranked TCU is at Baylor. TCU 10 and 0. Baylor 6 and 4. The Horned Frogs are favored by two and a half points. Now, this is a little bit of, of a homer pick for me. I'm an LSU fan, and now LSU has been pushed back into a potential college football playoff spot mm-hmm. with some of their recent wins. And they're in the SEC championship game. Right. LSU supporters need a TCU loss here. <laughs> so I'm going Baylor. I, I think Baylor has a decent chance here to beat TCU. So I'm going Baylor with the upset. I'm going to agree with you on Baylor has a decent chance. I mean, it it shows in the point spread, two and a half points. That's, you know, that, that, that's not a big margin. It's just... And and I'm going to compare TCU to another team, the Minnesota Vikings. They have found a way (laughs) every week to win. Same colors, too. Yeah, same colors. Maybe maybe it's the purple. So I'm going to say TCU wins this game, although I I do think LSU's got a shot because the loser of the Ohio State-Michigan game, I think, is out of the picture. So... I yeah, I did have some college football playoff questions for you that I'll probably pose to you after we do the picks. Yeah. There's a lot of scenarios here with L- if LSU beats Georgia that could screw up everything. Oh my goodness. You could have about six one-loss teams that mm. d- might not get in and a two-loss SEC champion would get in. Mhm. So like uh, we'll, we'll wait, but I, yeah. I'm just like, holy, <laughs> it's going to yep, be wild. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the next couple of games, they're going to be kind of quick. Austin P is at eighth ranked Alabama. Austin P, which is an FCS school, is seven and three. Alabama, eight and two. There is no point spread for this game. <laughs> Let's I just say I gamble on it. Alabama. Yeah. This is. Their cupcake game. Normally, you see these games near the beginning of the season. I'm it's surprised so it's in a week. What? What are we in week eleven? Week yeah, 12? week twelve. Otherwise, like Alabama loses to LSU, and then they sneak by Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. Like, what's happening here? Like, uh, uh, they're not going to lose to this cupcake. Oh team. no, 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 no. But if there was like a point spread. If it was like 55 and a half or something, <laughs> I'd probably still take Alabama because I think they're going to take out their Starting, last few weeks yeah. of frustrations on these poor guys. So yeah. we'll see what happens. 
Louisiana travels to 19th ranked Florida State. Louisiana five and five. Florida State seven and three. The Seminoles are favored by 24 points. Yeah, for Florida State. Yeah. They, they beat the Tigers earlier, and they're going to beat another Louisiana based. Yeah. Based team here. I'm going Florida State as well. It's actually nice to see them as an actual meaningful team this year. So. Yeah, they haven't really been too good since uh, James Winston left mm -hmm. that I've noticed. So since he left and was the first pick in the draft. Yeah. All right. 15th ranked Kansas State is at West Virginia. Kansas State 7-3. and three. West Virginia is 4-6. and six. Kansas State favored by 7.5. I don't know a whole lot about these two teams. Um Based on the records and the point spread, it, it seems like Kansas State should walk walk through this one, and uh, I'll I'll go ahead and take them. Yeah, I'm going to take Kansas State as well. The, the problem with West Virginia this year is when they play the teams that they should beat, they don't beat them. And when they play the teams that they shouldn't beat, like Oklahoma, they beat them. So, can't figure them out this year. Yeah. Uh 23rd ranked Oregon State is at Arizona State. Oregon State 7 and 3, Arizona State 3 and 7. The Beavers are favored by 8 points. I'll take Oregon State here. Not don't need to break it down too much. Yeah, I'm I'm going to go with the Beavers as well. Um spread's only 8 points. Yeah. Boston College goes to 18th ranked Notre Dame. Boston College three and seven. Pardon me, Notre Dame seven and three. Fighting Irish favored by 21 points. 21 and a half, or just 21? 21. Oh, yeah. The Irish seems to have hit their stride here. They uh, they struggled at the beginning of the season, but they mm -hmm. look a lot better now. I'll definitely take Notre Dame. Not sure about the about the gambling aspect on this one. Yeah. Um, 21 is kind of a high spread. It, is this game in Notre Dame? It is in Notre Dame, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I would probably take them to cover as well. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take them as well, although Boston College had that big win last week at North Carolina State. I can't see them doing it two weeks in a row. Yeah. Second-ranked Ohio State is at Maryland. Ohio State 10-0, Maryland 6-4. The Buckeyes favored by 27 and a half. <laughs> 27 and a half. So they're going to win by 28, right? That's what, what we're thinking here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the Buckeyes for sure. If Tua's younger brother, like if his knee was better, I Hold on, are you about to pick Maryland? Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, I got excited. <laughs> if if his knee was better, I might consider Maryland winning this game. But really? I'm not. I'm taking Ohio State. Although I, I still say to this day, and I, I I've never said this to you, but I'll say it here, and I still think this to this day. The game that Ohio State had a few years ago with Maryland where Urban Myers had his hands on his knees and he wasn't, you know, his self. I yeah. think that's the game that ultimately set, caused Urban Meyer to go, I can't coach anymore because they almost <laughs> lost that game. If you remember that. Well, too bad it didn't happen because a lot of stuff happened to him after that. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Number one, Georgia is at Kentucky. Georgia 10 and 0. Kentucky 6 and 4. The Bulldogs are favored by 22 and a half. Is this, the, is this where Will Levis uh, skyrockets into the top 10 in the draft? <laughs> <laughs> if Not he against wants this to, defense. If he wants to prove himself that he can that he can play at the next level, this is the defense you have to prove it against. Now I'm not taking Kentucky here, okay? I'm mm -hmm. going to make that a point because Georgia is just great in every aspect yeah. of the game. Um, but I think I would take I would take Kentucky with the points. 
And I think this is, it's probably like the number one CBS game. Yeah. My guess. It is. Um, they usually take like the top um, SEC game. As long as, especially here in Canada, that's what we get on TV. So um, this would be Will Levis's opportunity to show the scouts what he is. Right now, he's probably the third or he's probably fell down to the fourth ranked quarterback. Hendon Hooker has been playing really well. So if he wants to be a first round pick, I think he's this is his opportunity to show it. But like I said, I'm not taking Georgia lose this game, but I do think it'll be closer than the experts think. I I do think Georgia's going to win this game. Um, Kentucky, their team, they got to the top 10 at one point during the season, and then they just kind of collapsed, which is a shame because they've been really good these last few years. Um, I agree with you. I don't see the 22 and a half being matched, but you never know. I swear, when, when the odds makers make it like 22 and a half instead of 20 and a half, mm -hmm. they want you to take Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's just that little extra point. Like, maybe they think they're going to win by three touchdowns. Maybe we can get someone to bet on Kentucky if it's 22 and a half. And then it ends up being 49 to three. Yeah. And then you lose all your money. But, you know. Miami travels to ninth ranked Clemson. Miami five and five. Clemson nine and one. The Tigers are favored by nineteen. It, this is a team not getting a whole lot of love. The nine and one Clemson Tigers. They eh? really aren't. Like if you if you look at all these one loss teams, like like what? Where is Clemson ranked? Nine. They're nine. Like like why is Alabama ahead of them? Alabama has two losses, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe it's quali the quality of the schedule. I, I think Clemson needs to win this game, and they need to win it big. Yeah. They need to get into that spot. Now, I'm sure they're going to be in the ACC title game. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure who they're going to play. They're probably going to win that game. Is that going to put them into the college football playoff? That's, that's what makes college football so interesting because, like, mm -hmm. you can still – yeah, you can only beat who's in front of you. Yeah. So, yeah, I got Clemson here. I have Clemson as well. Um, I mean, their only loss is to a good Notre Dame team who are 18th in the in those rankings. So, as long as, you know, Clemson can keep winning and Notre Dame can keep winning, Clemson's got a shot, I think. But we'll have to see. Yeah. 11th ranked Penn State is at Rutgers. Penn State 8 and 2, Rutgers 4 and 6. Penn State favored by 19. Penn State. Yeah, it's Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to talk about anything else. Rutgers, sorry, but no. Not happening. No, no. Uh 24th ranked NC State travels to Louisville. NC State 7 and 3, Louisville 6 and 4. Louisville favored by 4. See, I thought I was going to go out on a limb and take Louisville, but they're the favorite. Yeah. Okay, so it's not an underdog pick. I'm I'm taking Louisville. I'm gonna disagree with you on this one. I think NC. Good. State, I hope so. We we need a little debate on the show. I, I think NC State's going to rebound this week, and they're going to win this game, and you know. Try to have a decent finish to the season. Yeah, they, they they've had some unlucky breaks. What was it, Clemson that they should have beat? Yeah, the beginning There's of the a year. Few teams they should have beaten. Yeah, I remember in the first couple of weeks they were they were coming on, they were playing really well, and they just couldn't finish, like you said. Yeah. Twenty fifth ranked Cincinnati is at Temple. Cincinnati eight and two. Temple three and seven. Cincinnati favored by seventeen. Yeah, yeah, Cincinnati. Um, I, I don't see them falling here to Temple. If this was college basketball, I might give Temple a shot, but this is college football. I'm going <laughs> Cincinnati. Does Temple have a have a decent basketball team? I, I don't follow the college basketball. I mean, they, teams, they used to for a long time, but you know, they, they they haven't you know done anything in a while. So, okay. 
Georgia Tech is at 13th ranked North Carolina. Georgia Tech, 4-6. and six. North Carolina, 9-1. and one. The Tar Heels are favored by 21 points. Hmm. Can you say that first uh, team again? Sorry. I, I Georgia missed. Tech. Georgia Tech versus who? North Carolina. Okay. And what's the uh, point spread now? Uh, North Carolina by 21. Wow, that's... I, yeah, Georgia Tech, they just run that uh, that power run game basically the whole time, right? Mm -hmm. Triple option type stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take the Tar Heels. You were asking, uh, or you were talking about a few minutes ago, who Clemson is going to play in the ACC title game. It's going to be North Carolina. Okay. So, um, so that's already set in stone with the pretty two? Pretty much, two yeah. Sides? Okay. And North Carolina is in a position where – they have a shot at making the college football playoffs right now. So I I kind of overlooked them this year. And, <laughs> you know, I shouldn't do that. So Yeah, there's a lot of teams out there. If, if everything falls the way, like, that will help them, mm -hmm. then there's a lot of teams that have a chance yeah. to get in. So There are. Fifth-ranked Tennessee is at South Carolina. Tennessee nine and one. South Carolina six and four. Tennessee favored by twenty-one and a half points. I think the point spread's a little high here, but I will take Tennessee to win this game. Here's how I look at this for Tennessee, because they're not playing in the SEC title game. No. All they've got to do win this game. This week, beat Vanderbilt next week, and hope LSU loses, and maybe one other team, and Tennessee's in. LSU loses to who? To Georgia. Well, to anyone. You you think Tennessee with one loss would be ahead of Ohio State or Michigan with one loss? I do, because nope. I think Tennessee – they showed a stat the other day where Tennessee's played five five games this year against ranked opponents, and they're four and one yeah. this year. You can't ignore that. That's, and the head to head, the head to head win versus LSU was like a blowout. Mm -hmm. Like they beat them good. And and the win against Alabama, which is I think still the biggest win of the season. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to say Tennessee wins this game which will set up a possibility of next week where they may or may not clinch a playoff spot. But we'll have to see. Now, has there ever been a, an SEC team to not play in the SEC championship game to make the playoff? I think Alabama did one year. Did they? Okay, I was going to say, that's a tough, tough uh, thing to do there. It is. But it really I guess is. we'll see what happens. Yep. <laughs> I do not envy this committee right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I think LSU totally screwed everything up for everybody, and I love it. Mm -hmm. 14th ranked Ole Miss is at Arkansas. Ole Miss 8-2, and two, Arkansas 5-5. Five and five. Mississippi, Ole Miss favored by 2.5. I'm, uh, well, it's not a huge upset, but I think it is. I'm going to take Arkansas here. Um, I like how they played against LSU last week. You think know, they're better than their record? So, yeah, I'm going Arkansas. I'm going to go Ole Miss on this one. I, I I do think it'll be a close game, but I think Ole Miss will rebound from the loss against Alabama, and they will beat Ole Miss, or they'll beat Arkansas this week. Okay. 22nd ranked Oklahoma State is at Oklahoma. Oklahoma State 7-3, and three, Oklahoma 5-5. Five and five. Oklahoma favored by seven and a half. What? Yeah. Is Jim Ross making the odds? It, it's a little the, shout out. The, the born spread is when you pick a number <laughs> and you make one team the favorite. It's going to be a slobber knocker. We know that. Oh, man. My hat's too far away. I love, Jim Ross. I love it when we get a little wrestling talk in the sports show. Because if you guys don't know, me and Bill have a wrestling podcast. DK and Bill wrestling podcast. Mm -hmm. Check it out. 
and we're um, gonna be having an episode up within the next week. Yes. So you don't want to miss. Once it. you watch the show, we will review it. Mm -hmm. I have many insights. <laughs> I've made a lot of notes when I watched it. So, um, yeah, Oklahoma has sucked this year. Let's yeah, be honest. They have. Didn't they lose like forty-two nothing at home this year? Yeah. I remember I took them to win. I was like, oh, my God, they're eight-point underdogs at home. This is easy. And then they lost by, like, five touchdowns or six mm -hmm. touchdowns or something. Oklahoma State. Like, like not even with the points. I, right. I will take them money line. The odds. Like, are you reading that wrong, maybe? No, that I'm, I'm reading me. it. Oklahoma, OU, seven and a half. Minus seven and a half. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, well, after we've done recording, I'm jumping on that before they change it. Like, oh, my God, we hit the wrong button. <laughs> but, you know, usually when they do that, they, they know something I don't know. So Oklahoma right. probably win, but I'm taking Oklahoma State. I'm, I'm going Oklahoma State as well. Oklahoma's not – they may be the most disappointing team or at least one of the most disappointing teams this year in the country. And Yes, for sure. They're going to the SEC in a couple years. Five and five is not going to cut it in the SEC, boys. It's not. Oh, that five and five record would probably be two and eight in the SEC. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure there's been a couple cupcake teams in the Big 12 that they've beat on. Well, speaking of teams that are moving to new conferences, seventh ranked USC is at 16th ranked UCLA. USC nine and one, UCLA eight and two. USC favored by two and a half points. And where is this game? UCLA. Okay. Uh, UCLA, man. Like, I, the few times I've been on this show, I've taken UCLA. You, were not, you weren't on the bandwagon yet. I like UCLA here. It's not much of an upset, but this – is it going to be? No, it's not going to be my upset pick of the week. But I'm going UCLA. I Because USC is the Pac-12's last shot. <laughs> to get in to the college football playoffs. And yeah. somehow, some way, the Pac-12 is going to mess it up. UCLA is going to win. This, this team hasn't done anything since Reggie Bush played there. Right? Pretty much. Like, from what I remember, like, like it was Reggie Bush and Matt Leinart versus Vince Young. That was, like, the last time mm -hmm. USC was really – a powerhouse like well, nine got, and one is is nothing to joke about i mean they got lincoln riley there and he yeah. done a 180 in a matter i, of I think time. lincoln riley would is a very good offensive coach but i don't think he will win anything it as in a championship mm -hmm. i don't mean a pac 12 championship i mean like a national title he may be a keyword being maybe Right now, the best coach in college football that has not won a national title. Yeah. Because it was Kirby Smart until last year. Mm -hmm. Now it's I, like. I really thought he was going to be like the next guy to go to the NFL. I really did. Riley? Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I could see him kind of becoming like a Sean Payton type coach. Mm -hmm. Maybe he finds the right opportunity with the right quarterback, the way, way Sean Payton and Drew Brees found each other in 2006. Right. right. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I know he he left Oklahoma and now he's at USC, so I don't think he would leave after one year. But No, no. There's, n there's not really I, any I do see him there. being there some sometime. All right. Uh, UAB is at sixth ranked LSU. UAB five and five. LSU eight and two. The Tigers are favored by 14 and a half points. It's just some kind of weird trap game for LSU. They've clinched their SEC title game appearance. Mm -hmm. Now, if they have another loss this year, they have no chance at the college football playoff. Exactly. They do have a, a, a small chance to get in if they could beat Georgia. Mm -hmm. But – this has got to be LSU here. I, I hope it's not a trap game for them. But yeah. 14 and a half is probably pretty close to where it should be. Brian Kelly's not going to let them fall asleep on this one. 
Not a chance. This is LSU. I hope you're right. <laughs> Colorado is at 17th ranked Washington. Colorado 1-9. and nine. Washington 8-2. and two. This is the biggest point spread of the week. Washington favored by 31 points. Wow. Why is Colorado so terrible? How did they get a win? That's the I'm, question. Yeah. Who, who lost to them? Has there been like a team in a Power Five conference that went over before? Let me, let me see. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen that before. Let me, let me um, look it up real quick. Yeah, I remember hearing the coach like they they hired they hired this the, whoever the coach is in Colorado they hired him, and he came on the Jim Rome show like right at the beginning of the college football year, mm-hmm. and I was like, I'm like. I like this guy. I think he's going to do well. And then now he's one and nine. So I guess I can't judge. Um, um, yeah, I'll take Washington here in this game. The only game that they won was against California. Oh. <laughs> so. And Aaron Rodgers doesn't play there anymore. So Right. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going Washington on this one. This is This is kind of an... A pretty obvious pick. (laughs) Yeah. I'm, you know what? If I was a better, I might take the point spread on this one. 31 and a half. Yeah, I might take it. It's not a huge spread, to be honest. Like, like sometimes you see, like, in the 40s, Mm -hmm. like, usually when Ohio State is playing somebody that they should kill. Right. In that 38 to 42 range. 31 and a half. Like, it it could be 35, nothing at halftime. It, It could. And our final game, and this one is a big game because this is going to have Pac-12 championship implications. 10th-ranked Utah at 12th-ranked Oregon. Both teams are 8-2. and two. Both teams, and, and I never mention conference records, but I'm going to do it this one time. Both teams are 6-1 and one in the conference. Oregon is a three-point favorite. Okay. Oregon's looked pretty good since they lost to Georgia. Now, who, who was the second loss to? Washington. That was Washington. Last week. So they're looking to bounce back. Mm-hmm. Utah, from what I've seen, has looked pretty good. This game's in Oregon. Mm-hmm. I got to go the Ducks here. I, I, I was c- trying to talk myself into Tate and Utah, but... I'm going to be smart here. I'm going to take Oregon. This is going to be, it's mild, but this is going to be my upset pick of the week. I am taking Utah to win in Oregon. Um, I never really bought into the Ducks this year, even, you know, when after they lost to Georgia and they kept winning game after game after game. Their biggest win, I think, is against USC, which is a very good win. But I still can't buy into them. Like I've bought into U- UCLA, Oregon. I'm kind of yeah. So I'm gonna take Utah. That's gonna be my upset pick of the week this week. So basically, the winner of this game would face USC no matter what. Well, um, and USC fall out of it if they lose. Okay, here's all right. I, I I'm gonna try my best to do this because this is kind of a fun talk here because this is. Got to be college football playoff talk as well here. Yeah. USC is 7-1 and one in conference play. Utah and Oregon are both 6-1. and one. Washington is 5-2. and two. UCLA is 5-2. and two. So, um, if USC wins Saturday, they're in the conference title game. Okay. Because their last game is against Notre Dame. So, that's going to have... So, they only have the one division then. Yeah. Well, th- okay. yeah, because it's so then it's just the top two that face each other. Right. That's a, that always bothered me about the SEC because I, there was a lot of times where the top two teams in the SEC were both in the West or the East. East. And then like the second year. team would always get screwed out of the game and they have to face a lesser opponent in the title game. Yeah, like this year, like yeah, the two top teams are Georgia and Tennessee. Yeah. LSU is is taking advantage of that where they used to. It used to be a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I guess that's the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. 
But this is going to be an interesting week. Uh, a lot's going to ride in the Pac-12. And then next week, the Big Ten, you know, with Ohio State and Michigan. And I think even the or the Big Ten West, I don't think that division's been decided yet. So there's still a few things that can happen. But And then we've got like two more weeks of – the, the the rankings coming out for the playoffs. Um because I really think with Ohio State and Michigan, whoever loses that game is probably out, which is a shame. But that's just how oh. it goes. So I know it's hard, but why don't you give me your projected four right now and we'll see we'll see how close we are. Because I don't know if we'll be able to talk about college again right? before this happens. So, and then, you know, a little bragging rights on the line here. Okay, well, I think you and I can both agree Georgia's number one. I, I think Georgia's in for sure. Yeah, they're you know, definitely what, in. How that game goes against the Tigers. Right. So, yes, I agree. I would say right now the order would be Georgia one, Michigan 2, TCU 3, Ohio State 4, Tennessee would be 5. Okay. And the, only, and the only reason Tennessee's on the outside is because Ohio State hasn't lost a game yet. Right. And if Tennessee wins the last two, eventually they they could they would slip into the 4 spot for me. Or okay. if TCU yeah. loses, there's that possibility. So that you have Georgia beating LSU in the SEC. I, I do. Think. And so you don't have a Pac-12 team. No. Okay. Even if USC finishes eleven and one, you don't have them there. No, they they'd be close. Yeah, they'd probably be it's like gonna number, be interesting. number six. Um, like based on what I want to happen, I want LSU to beat Georgia. I don't right. think it's gonna happen. So I have Georgia one, I have Ohio State two after beating Michigan. They would be undefeated. Number three would probably be uh, it gets tough. Yeah. I I I kind of disagree with you. I think Michigan could be there with one loss. If it's a close game. Okay. Yeah, I'll say Michigan, Michigan three. And then Tennessee would be four for me. And then you have Georgia versus Tennessee. And, and then you State, get Ohio Michigan. State, Ohio State, Michigan college football playoff matchup would be pretty awesome. So good luck, committee. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think they go like this is what I think they should do? Like when they're doing their rankings, they should put the potential matchup and go, like, do they deserve to be there? Mm -hmm. Or should they do it? Okay, this team is gonna get killed by this team. Right. Just the way it way it works out. I mean and maybe another team comes in because of the potential matchup of this team's gonna get killed. I mean like instead of putting USC in there against Ohio State or Michigan, because I think USC would lose to both those teams, having a team like Michigan face Ohio State again because let's say the game was really good, it was one in overtime or a field goal or something. That's the way I think they should do it. I don't think they do it that way. I think they actually look through the schedule and who is the best team and who is who is the four best teams. Right. Now, the thing that's also interesting that we got to think about is the the bowl games that are going to have them because it's the yeah. Peach Bowl and the Fiesta Bowl this year. Yeah. I don't know which one is going to get the other, but let's say Tennessee and Georgia both make it and they face each other. That game has to be at the Peach Bowl. Yeah. Like, it just only makes... <laughs> Geographical sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, right? 
like like it was uh, LSU playing in our Rose Bowl. That wouldn't make sense. Oh, they play God. in the Sugar Bowl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's just what what we do. So yeah, uh, should be interesting, though. Like yeah. I know we're a few weeks out still, so maybe we can uh, get JC on here and we can do like a college football preview and. Mm-hmm. We can watch him fumble through his words because he doesn't know anything about college. <laughs> He'll flip a coin. <laughs> yeah, like he did for WrestleMania. I think the coin did better than us, so. He did. <laughs> we can't knock the coin. Oh, God. Man, good times. Yeah. So. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, hit the subscribe button and click on the bell, like I always tell you guys to do. And uh, join us tomorrow because we're going to do NFL picks. And there's a couple of interesting games coming up this week. So, yeah, I'll say looking forward to that. Yep. You guys have a good week. Enjoy your week 12 of college football.